if somebody uh, cares to release them. But anyway, quite a story out of South Carolina, right? Track a few thunderstorms on radar this afternoon. Heads up, Thompson. You got another heavy storm heading your way with a very heavy rain and some lightning as well. Another look at radar in your seven day forecast coming up. Take a look at radar. We are tracking some showers and storms in the western CSRA. Get ready, Harlem. This uh, low downpour is going to be heading your way in southern Columbia County. And during, you're likely seeing just some light to moderate rainfall, nothing all too, too heavy. And Thompson, you've got some heavier rain crossing I-20 towards you there in downtown Thompson. And it's looking pretty heavy up at the airport as well. A little bit further towards the southwest, Gibson. This line of storms heading towards your way next within the next 30, 45 minutes. Rins a little bit longer than that. And then into northern Washington County, those storms out of Hancock County going to be moving through for y'all. So through this evening, up until around midnight, we're going to have some hit or miss storms around the area. Tomorrow afternoon, most of those storms appear to stay south of I-20. A little bit higher chance to see some storms later in the day after Tuesday. Riley, thanks so much. The news continues here on News 12. We're back after a short break. See you in three minutes. just ahead of this Democratic National Convention, and this year's get-together is looking a lot different. We're going to tell you what to expect this week. And a big play for the Washington football team, but this one's off the field. The franchise announcing today a new team president who is already making history. But first this afternoon, as parents choose between in-person or virtual learning for their kids, some schools offer just one option. Today, McDuffie County students heading back to school completely online. Students relying heavily on hotspot locations since they are located outside the city. Brady Trapnell went to see how parents and kids handled the first day back. Other than seeing the occasional school bus drive around, it's a quiet back to school here in McDuffie County. Some students are learning from home and others from church parking lot. That's because many families live in rural areas. So to try to help with that, the school system put Wi-Fi hotspots on 12 resource officer cars during the day and four for the evening. I found one set up in an apartment complex, but I also went to a location at Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, and no one was there. Meanwhile, many students couldn't take their classes today. Those who signed up for face-to-face -face originally had to wait to pick up their materials tomorrow. So some parents I spoke with are frustrated with how the day went. But I just kind of felt like that should have already been done before the first day of school. So these kids are going to get left behind, the ones that have no internet, and they're going to struggle. The plan isn't for the learn from home situation to be long term. September 4th is the day when school officials will decide if parents and students will have to continue to do this. Reporting in McDuffie County, Brady Shrapnel on your side. We've reached out to the McDuffie County school system for a comment. We'll let you know when we hear back. Some breaking news, we're learning all Steinmart stores around the country are closing. We told you last week they thought most would close. Now we know all of them will. That includes the one on Washington Road. What they don't know yet is when those stores will close. We'll let you know when that happens. It's weather now as we check in with Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale. And Riley, some of our viewers are seeing some rain this afternoon. And Richard, we were just talking about McDuffie County. McDuffie County, definitely one of those places seeing some heavy downpours on radar this afternoon. Here's a look from Grovetown. This is looking westbound down I-20. You can definitely see that heavy rain moving through. So most of the rain we're tracking this afternoon is west of Augusta, and we've stayed dry today. So we are still at 93 out at the airport. Luckily, it hasn't been as humid for us today, two points near 70, so it's not feeling as bad, but still definitely feeling like August nonetheless. Now, we do have some storms through McDuffie County, Warren County, Hancock County. These storms are moving from the northwest towards the southeast, so trying to make their way towards the coast, and they are forming up ahead of a cold front that will be in play for our weather through the rest of the week. Devro, Mayfield, Warrington, Thompson, you're all seeing some heavy rain from this line moving through. It's not severe, and it's not really uh, showing signs of producing any strong wind gusts, but some heavy rain, some lightning going to be possible with those storms. Through this evening and to tonight, we can't rule out some passing storms up until around midnight. Once you see the rain for your area and it stops, then you should be done for rain tonight. And it should help cool you off nicely, uh, generally down into the 70s. So through 
sunset, even up until around midnight, just can't rule out some lingering storm activity. We'll have more on those storm changes for the rest of the week in just a little bit. Thank you, Riley. Two men arrested in the unsolved 2002 murder of Run DMC's Jam Master Jay. Carl Jordan Jr. and Ronald Washington have been charged with murder. The DJ of the hip-hop group, whose real name was Jason Mizell, was shot and killed in a New York recording studio back on October 30th of 2002 at 37 years old. Jordan will be arraigned today through a teleconference. Washington will be arraigned later this week. The Washington football team announcing their new team president, Jason Wright, becoming the first black person to hold that position for an NFL team. The 38-year-old is also the league's youngest team president. Wright spent seven years as a running back before going into business. He shared what his focus will be, saying, quote, make sure that we have an organization people want to be a part of and that itself will start to expand the value of the franchise. The Canadian Football League has canceled its 2020 season altogether. The league just announced they will not have a shortened 2020 season. Instead, they'll focus on 2021. The football commission... The commissioner there says the league would have suffered significant financial losses if they would have played this season with no fans. Unlike our NFL, which relies heavily on TV rights, the CFL's main revenue is from in-person attendance. The league had also requested a loan from the Canadian government, but that was rejected. The Democratic National Convention kicks off today. Package. Taking a look now at coronavirus cases across the two states, today DHEC reporting over 450 new cases and 20 more deaths. The state's total now over 105,000 confirmed cases with more than 2,100 deaths. In Georgia, DPH reporting over 1,800 new cases and 25 more deaths. The state's total now over 238,000 with more than 4,700 deaths. More children are getting infected with COVID-19. The CDC says as of August 3rd, a little over 7% of all reported cases were among children, but children make up about 22% of the U.S. population. The agency also says the rate of cases in children have steadily been increasing from March to July. They say the true infection rate in kids is not really known, in part because of a lack of coronavirus testing. Acne from wearing a mask, also called maskne, is a skin care nuisance that a lot of people are getting familiar with during this pandemic. A dermatologist says, if it's happening to you, you're not alone. She says it's happening because we breathe into our mask all day long and they sit right there on our skin. Definitely an increased number of patients with maskne, especially areas that are kind of under inclusion, like the bridge of the nose and the, the chin and cheeks definitely as well. Help out the problem. She suggests washing or changing out your mask regularly and also maintaining your regular skin care routine. She also says it's important to just give yourself a break. The pandemic is stressful, and of course, stress can also play a part in your skin. Walgreens and CVS are putting in place coronavirus precautions for flu shots. Pharmacists will check temperatures, screen for other symptoms, and wear face shields while giving the shots. Patients will have to wear face masks and are encouraged to schedule an appointment and fill out the paperwork online. Both CVS and Walgreens are expecting a big increase in demand for the shots. The precautions come amid concerns about the overlap of the pandemic with flu season. Walmart is adding back some store hours starting today. Some stores will now extend closing time from 8.30 in the evening until 10 at night. Walmart expects, stretch, expects stretching out those hours will make it more convenient for its customers. Well, the pandemic is changing the way we deal with our finances, and now might be the best time to talk to kids about money. We're going to look at some resources to help you do that. Great changes for the rest of this evening. Looking the highest on the Georgia side of the Savannah River, all of our Carolina counties currently dry. We'll have a look at radar and the rest of your week's forecast coming up. This might be a good time to talk about money with your kids. Win for you. This might be a good time to talk about money with your kids. The pandemic has changed financial situations for a lot of families, so teaching your children now about budgets and savings could be a key to their own financial health. Dan Shinneman shares some ways that'll help educate kids. With so many parents spending time at home with their kids, it may be the perfect time to talk about, well, spending. This whole adage about more is cost than taught is really true when it comes to educating kids about money. Ted Rossman of Bankrate.com suggests parents start small. Now, even just giving them a few bucks a week for an allowance could be a good way to teach them about saving, investing.
fasting, giving charity. Another option, teaching kids about the digital economy. Greenlight is, it's basically a debit card for kids that parents manage from their phones. Why would your kids need a Greenlight debit card? Greenlight is one possibility. The debit cards have controls which allow parents to add value and allow or deny some purchases. It has a built-in spending account with the debit card and parental controls and create savings goals. The kids can kind of visually see how close they're getting to their goal. Um, personal finance is often not taught in schools. And, and so Greenlight is trying to make that, you know, solve that problem. All this may help lead to the most important lesson of all. I think a fundamental concept is you can't have it all. So if you spend this much on some item, you're not going to have that left for something else. In other words, money only goes so far. Definitely important to talk to kids at a young age and check that out. How neat is it? A debit card for kids. Mm -hmm. Kids get real funny when it comes to spending money. That's mm -hmm. their money. All of a sudden, the whole thing is flipped. <laughs> it is. Well, to weather now as we take a look over Aiken. Looks pretty nice out there. It's kind of nice to see the clouds and the sun shining. I know it's kind of a change from this weekend, Riley. It definitely is, Zane. A beautiful day over Aiken County there. And our hawk friend definitely enjoying a nice view. And no rain currently in our Carolina counties. Most of the storms we're tracking this afternoon are staying on the Georgia side of the Savannah River. But you can see these storms are forming up ahead of this cold front, and they're trying to fill in the gap some. So we're starting to see this line of storms moving through our western counties start to expand and get a little bit stronger. So these are now stretching into portions of northern Columbia County all the way through Hancock County, Warren County, uh, and McDuffie County as well. The storm over Thompson actually just blew up, folks. We actually uh, just took the height of this storm. It's over or close to 60,000 feet tall. So this is a big improvement from where it was earlier. So this storm is strengthening and producing some torrential rain and a few strikes of lightning. So that's going to continue into southern McDuffie County and then Jefferson County next. In Hancock County, Devereaux, you've seen some storms move on through. Now that those storms have moved through for you, you should be dry the rest of this evening. Closer towards the metro, here's Bobby Jones, Augusta right here. There's Evans and Martinez. Most of the storms have been off towards our west, but this line's starting to expand a little bit further east. So this development is starting to show some spotty showers forming in northern Columbia County. Here in the Augusta metro, if this line continues to fill in, we can expect some rain fairly shortly. This line's going to just continue tracking towards the coastline as this front continues towards the southeast. This front is going to stall out over the area on Tuesday. Now, this is going to keep our rain chances highest on the south side of that front. So south of I-20, that's where our storm chances are going to be highest throughout the day, uh, Tuesday and Tuesday evening. On Wednesday, that front is expected to just get a little bit of a jog north. So that's going to keep our rain chances across the area, isolated to scattered, even north of uh, I-20 on Wednesday. We could see a few spotty downpours. Tonight, those scattered storms are expected. Currently, most of them staying on the Georgia side of the river. So if you live on the Carolina side, I would say you have less of a chance of seeing rain than anyone here on the Georgia side of the river. Low temperatures tonight going to vary from the upper 60s in the northern CS rates near 70 for us here in the metro. Tomorrow afternoon, we're expecting to stay near 90 for highs. So once again, not overly hot. And we do have the chance for a few storms again tomorrow afternoon. Remember, most of those storms on Tuesday are going to stay south of Augusta. Our high temperatures tomorrow, how about this? Upper 80s to near 90, definitely an improvement from the mid to upper 90s we've seen over the past week or so. So that is some relief in the forecast. It's just that these slightly cooler temperatures are going to be accompanied with storms most afternoons. This is not going to be a washout situation. You just have a decent chance of seeing a passing shower storm at some point during the day. Thanks, Riley. A woman is recovering after being attacked by a great white shark. Hear how her husband was able to save her just in the nick of time. If you think PBS. The iconic Golden Girls house has just sold for a lot more than the asking price. The Los Angeles home was originally listed just under $3 million. It was only on the market for a couple of weeks, and then it sold for $4 million. bucks. Wow, no word on who bought it. However, the listing agent expressed amazement at all the interest for the home, saying she had no idea there were that many Golden Girls fans in the world. And surely you have to be a Golden Girls fan to pay $1 million more than the asking price. I would think so, too. And, you know, the show was set in Miami. Interesting that the house was sold in L.A. 
Wow. That's Hollywood for you. There you right go. there. Well, here's a situation firefighters don't normally find themselves in, running from a longhorn bull. Crews in California were clearing the road so engines could safely navigate to a spot to fight wildfires. But the bull didn't take too kindly to the strangers. I guess not. They went running in the opposite direction. The fire department posted this video on their Facebook page. They've had hundreds of views. People are now even trying to name that bull. But thankfully in all this, no one was injured. But, you know, you're walking up the road trying to clear it, and all of a sudden it is reverse full speed. I know. It makes your job harder. Well, a man had a real close encounter with a great white shark in Australia. He says he punched the shark to save his life. She was attacked while surfing, and her husband, Mark, paddled to her side to get the shark away. Right. Mark actually climbed onto the surfboard his wife was on to punch that shark. He says his wife is in good spirits in the hospital, but he says there's a long recovery ahead. Oh, you see the mother of your child and your support, everything that's who you are. And so you just react. You just get off that calf. Well, that's all I could think was just get off, you know. You could still just hear the emotion in his voice. Um, they've been using drones and boats and jet skis to try to track that shark. But such a close call, and mm -hmm. his determination saved his wife. I know. Scary situation, and good for him to know how to react so quickly. Right. Unbelievable there. Mm -hmm. Riley? As of Thompson, you are getting hit with a very strong thunderstorm, producing some heavy rain and a good bit of cloudy ground lightning as well. These storms are expected to last through this evening. We'll have an update for you coming up. Stand on our reputation. Like and follow News 1226 on Facebook for the latest up-to-date coverage near you. We did just get an update on the storms moving through McDuffie and Columbia County, heading towards Richmond County. These storms are producing 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts, so definitely some strong wind with these storms. Some very heavy rain as well, and maybe even uh, uh, some cloudy ground lightning mixed in as well. So storms are expected to be moving through this evening up until around midnight. But once they start and stop for your area, then you should be dry the rest of tonight. We're looking at our potential rain totals through the through the work week. Now, we know how downpours work. If you get underneath a heavy downpour, you're likely going to see much more than what this model is going with. This is just a broad uh, paintbrush view of kind of the rain totals we're expecting over the next five days. Most, most of us see it around an inch between now and Friday. So the high storm chances you see through the week, this isn't necessarily saying it's going to be a washout. You just have a high chance of seeing rain at some point each day. Riley, thanks very much. That's going to wrap it up for News 12 at 530. We're going to continue tracking those storms. News 12 at 6 o'clock continues here in three minutes. If you have COVID